Bang, needs knives, knife talk. I'm Jared, with my lovely wife, Kara. Hello. And today we are going to talk about blade shapes, where they came from, and what we use them for today. Okay, let's kick it off with the hawk spill. All right, the hawk spill. This blade shape, or this knife, is actually a Kubi anteater. And the blade shape was originally made for pruning bushes and plants and also um, pruning small branches on uh, yeah bushes and plants so um, then carpet and tile came into play and it was a very good blade shape for that and coming from a construction background <clears throat> excuse me I could say that if you're uh, it is a very good blade shape for cutting laminate and carpet because it's you can drag cut which everything gets pulled into the blade when you cut across and I say if I need to start in the middle of it the the tip is very good for penetration and then I can cut and drag cut and all the material gets pulled into the blade and gets sliced it is still good for slicing but it's mainly good for for cutting so um, but then now we also Karambits and uh, self-defense knives are often used or often use a hawk's bill blade because of its cutting purposes because it's such a good cutter it's a very good self-defense knife so karambits definitely use them nowadays do they also use that shape because of the fact how you hold it backwards and the the angle at which yeah, and the, it's such a good cutter yeah. because it literally pulls the material into itself so if you get slashed mm -hmm. by this you're pretty much going to get slashed get, yeah you're getting cut and i like to use this blade shape like if you look up a carpet knife, you're going to get a hawk's bill. If, you're going to, if you look up um, also a pruning knife, you're going to get a hawk's bill. But I use it for um, utilitarian purposes and not this specific, this specific knife, but I use this blade shape for cutting laminate, carpet, and stuff like that. And I sometimes do use, um, I've used this blade actually at work before for, um, for construction purposes just because I felt like it. All right, let's move <clears throat> on to the um, spade point, also known as the reverse tanto. All right. Yeah, a lot of people do call this the reverse tanto, but it is actually a spade point. This is the Ganzo F756 and also the the Benchmade 940 has this exact same blade shape. And handle. And it is um just a different size. But it is very good, or it was originally made for spaying animals because they wanted a knife that was not going to stab or penetrate the legs of the animal or the belly of the animal. So, and when you're spaying a lot of livestock, you are trying to do it very quickly. So, but today we use it for a multi purpose, sorry, multi purpose blade blade shape it is very good for work purposes anybody with a 940 can you know can tell you that it's uh, still good for slicing it does have a little bit of a belly so it's good for for hunting purposes with the belly for um <clears throat> skinning and whatnot but it has a very thick tip normally so you usually don't have to worry about damaging your tip but it's a very useful blade shape for for work and mm -hmm. um you know different purposes that really sharp angle here gets you a nice it still gets tip. you a nice tip but it's usually pretty thick yeah. because it's coming like from it. the spine right there and then down so. well speaking of that whole thing with the tip let's move on to the clip point which is kind of similar in that aspect all right the clip point some people call or actually they call the spider co calls this um the clip point i don't necessarily call the clip point i've i mean I guess it could be a clip point, but the clip point is just a knife where the front of it right here, I mean, all blade shapes could be called this, but where the tip looks like it's literally clipped off. Mm -hmm. It was originally made as a fighting slash hunting knife. So it's um, got a belly on it for field dressing animals, for skinning animals, basically, and for filleting for fish and stuff like that, but then also could be used for self-defense. And since it has 
<clears throat> a good tip on it. It can be used for piercing. The Bowie knife, like I said, was uh, was a clip point, and uh, yeah, it was um, a, had a big belly on, on it, and it was a really thick blade, so it could also be used for chopping and whatnot. And today we use it for hunting basically because it's very good for um for skinning animals and really good for outdoors purposes it's also used today as a very popular the cl quote yeah. unquote grandpa knife the classic buck knife yep that the, classic the buck pocket one, knife the buck 110 has a uh, clip point but then this is a very popular blade shape and this is technically considered a clip point at least that's what they label it as um yeah. i would say a modified clip point all right. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the Tonto. All right. Now the Tonto comes in a couple different versions. First, yeah. shoot, first, um, I also just want to say um, because um, I almost forgot it, it comes from the Japanese sword. This would be an American or the Japanese Tonto. I always mix those up. This would be the Japanese one with the belly on the front, so the top, the edge right here is rounded and it like she says <clears throat> it was from the Japanese sword and then the military for the American uh, version the American version has a sharp um, you know sharp angle to it and it's very good for penetration because the tip is extremely strong so I'm gonna take a drink <clears throat> It's very strong, so it's one of the strongest tips on a blade. So it's very good for penetration. So the military actually took it over, or started using it. Not took it over, started using it. But, let me grab something here. The blade shape is a lot of, some people don't like it. I like it because I find it very useful. I can use this edge right there, where the two edges meet, to cut, you know, packages or cut whatever I want. And then also, if I need a belly of a knife for the Japanese one, I can use this for roll cuts. Works and a then, lot better than it looks like it does. Yes, that, that very much so. That secondary point down here yeah, works Oh, my God, well. yeah. Especially if you sharpen your knives, you can keep that nice and sharp. Oh, it cuts through stuff like nothing. Yeah. And then uh, the tips are very strong, like I was saying, so you don't yeah, have to worry really about your stock. tip. Yeah, um, you don't have to worry about your tip. And it's usually got a straight spine, so a lot like the straight back, but because of the angle right here, it's the tanto. So, um, but yeah, it's also very good. You can use it for cutting, you know, for slicing things. So you can slice through things very well. Let me grab a modified one. This is more of a modified version where <clears throat> it is like a drop point. And we'll get to that in a second, but it's rounded all the way up the blade right here, and it barely has a little angle right there, but it does. Yeah, you can see but it's the very slightly. But I can use this just like a drop point where I can roll, roll cut things. So if I need a roll cut, I can still slice very well. It has a very good durable tip for penetration <clears throat> and slicing purposes. So very good, useful all around blade. Um, do I have any other Tantos up here? Did you bring up the Thanatos? No, let's do that. Okay, you know what? Also, this is... Oh, sorry. This is the Tucson uh, TS-49. And then this is the Mini Grip. This is the Tuya Envy. And now we're bringing up the Kubi Thanatos. And this one has, you can see, that edge right there where you can use it. Right there, penetration for slicing. And then also the tips on all of the above, all the ones I brought up. You see how you can use it for scraping purposes. I know you shouldn't really be scraping on your knives, but sometimes you do need to. And yeah. this is a very good work blade because in work, you might need to scrape something up, peel something up. Or if it's a very strong tip like this one, I could technically use this for prying. I can slip that edge right there up Probably underneath something <laughs> and pry. Well, some <laughs> knives are, you know, made. Some people don't believe this, but, you know, well, some knives are, so. are. Right, exactly. So you can get, um, you know, like this one I wouldn't do that with, but it does have a very strong tip still. And, you know, yeah, you can use it for so many purposes. So it's a very multi-purpose knife. And only the Japanese version you will get a belly on. Or a modified version like this. 
All right. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and move on to the trailing point. All right, the trailing point. Now, this is one I do not have here, but I have one to stand in its place, and I will explain the differences. This is the most like a trailing point. The difference is, is that this should keep going up, the belly, because normally with a trailing point, the tip is going to be the highest point. So if this handle was down farther, you could call it a trailing point, but basically this edge right here should round up just a little bit more so you get a little bit more cutting surfaces. So the tip would be pointed up to here. You get the, the point. That was made for hunting purposes and filleting fish and for um, skinning. So, and today, that is what it is still used for. We still use it for basically your, fl your um, flay knife. If you can think of your flay knife, mm, that is yeah. the trailing point. And it's used best for skinning animals and flaying fish. So, that you will get that from the bench bay <coughs> Benchmade Bedlam. That is a trailing point knife. So, all right. Next up. Is going to be the straight back. Back to the same knife. <laughs> We have a straight back here. This knife was made for an, um, basically a work knife because it has a very strong edge on there. It can be used, you can use the belly on it. You can use it for slicing and it's very good for cutting rope being usually a thick blade stock. You can put all your pressure down on one point for cutting rope or you know for basically you know just cutting stuff so it was made for just a strong blade shape where you could get basically all your weight down on any part of that edge and that's um basically what it's still used for today a lot of people still oh yeah also it's very good for batoning so where i can take a piece of wood and baton it through another piece of wood and hit the back of the spine and since it's straight it's very good for that yeah, because it doesn't it well it's straight too it's it when, I, it. when i put it through a piece of wood i say if my hand's a piece of wood if i put it through a piece of wood i'm going to be hitting straight across from the handle so it can yeah. be baton straight through the wood into two pieces and it's used for basically the same thing still today it's a very useful blade shape and um you, know, you don't see a lot of it today though there is a lot of blade shapes they they um they tend to drop point them and stuff <clears throat> yeah they, they tend to like put a lot of grinds and cut off tips and do a lot of that but the straight back is still a very useful blade shape and it's a very strong blade okay so let's go ahead and move on to one of my favorites, the sheep's foot. <clears throat> All right. Now, the sheep's foot was originally made for cutting off sheep's hooves. Sorry. Cutting them off, though, really? Cutting them off, trimming them, what have you. Because so sometimes savage. you need to trim their hooves. So it's for trimming their hooves, and they want it normally... I know this one has a very sharp tip on it, but a lot of them didn't. So some of them were more like the cleaver shape. And also um, I have, this is, I know it's a longer version, but this could be kind of like a sheep's foot. It has a little curve at the end. This one, see how it, it goes from back and then has the drop off right there. Some people think because it looks like the sheep's foot, that's why it was named that. It's, that's not true. It was named that because, uh, well, I mean, that might have inspired like a it a yeah. little bit, but it was because it was for cutting the sheep's um, hooves off or trimming them. So, and the, today, I like using them for um, utilitarian purposes, and I think if you look, that's what it looks like. It looks like a utility mm -hmm. blade, and being construction, that's a very useful blade shape for me because I can put all my pressure down on the tip now if i did that with a drop point it's a lot more harder like i gotta be more upright i can put all my pressure that i want down right on the tip of the blade and also so when i pull when i when i cut all the materials gonna be pulled into the tip or into the cutting path and also it's very good for slicing so i can still slice with it very good 
I cannot. Uh, yes, baby. I was just going to say, um, there's, you know, the different types of sheeps, but you get this more exaggerated one and this more subtle one in the bare, in the, what is it, the bare knuckle down here. Well, this is. So, no, um, not. anyway, you get the knife, um, over here, this Kaiser Rogue, which I found is extremely useful because it has this nice straight thick spine to be able to peel things. I mean, it works great. Not like an orange, but like a, a tab or a label or something because you have that really nice point and then you're able to dive in and scrape right off because it's still thin enough behind the edge for that which is great you want to you want to be careful with your tips as, long as you don't want to uh, just talk about like paper nothing dull like your crazy. tips on stuff nothing crazy here <laughs> but um but normally the shoes i mean not normally but sometimes you don't have such a precise tip this no. one does Some so i'm don't. saying like there's different kinds there's all different versions of everything and yeah. we're going to get into the worn cliff and then you'll notice like this is you know kind of an in-between but it is very good for utilitarian purposes and i think it's a very it's one of the most useful blade shapes for me but the one thing that this thing does lack is a belly so you're never going to get belly right. cuts yeah. from the sheep's foot but you will get very good cuts good slicing no belly okay so so you're not going to be doing any skinning with them you probably could but you're going to probably puncture the skin you're trying to cut off of an animal or, you know, if you're trying to slice, you know, in between yeah. stuff, something that's thin. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and move on to a similar one, the Warncliffe. All right, the Warncliffe. The Warncliffe was originally from Lord Warncliffe. He wanted a very strong blade made for him, and this was the blade they came up with. It has a straight drop from the back of the blade, or the heel of the blade, all the way down to the tang, all the way down to the tip. And then normally is a straight edge. So it's a straight edge on the bottom. And then this, the spine of the blade goes all the way down to the tip. That's why, if you notice, this is a little bit of a hybrid because it does have this subtle drop off right there and it's not completely straight right there. And the Warren Cliff is usually always a, um, a round spine, right? Yeah, I just said that. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it always has a subtle drop down all the way down to okay. the tip, and um, and just like with this, you'll notice it has a little bit of an edge right there, but it's almost a worn cliff. But seeing as how we do a lot of modifications with blade shapes yeah. these days, so this has a little bit of a belly, not much, but a little bit of a belly. This is the artisan shark. This originally had a sharp tip on it. I modified it into a worn cliff because you broke it. And also, this is the bare knuckle, and the Kershaw bare knuckle, and this is the Kershaw leak. But this is a very good version of a worn cliff. This, I find, just like the sheep's foot, very good utilitarian purposes. It's a very good EDC because you're not, you, usually, you know, when you're skinning animals and stuff, that's usually with a fixed blade. So for a pocket knife, it pretty much can take on just about any task a po pocket knife will be needed for. If you need to slice something, cut something, if you need some precision cutting, good precision cutting with the tip. And also, you know, if you need to pick something out of something, it's very good for that because it usually has a very precise tip. And also, being rounded on the back, you can grab it like this. So, there's lots of good purposes for a worn cliff. I really like this blade shape along with the sheep's Definitely foot. Multi-purpose. Yeah, knife. it's kind of like the utility blade also that the the sheep's foot is just like anything you can use a utility blade for you can usually use a worn cliff for all right next up okay so let's move on to another definitely multi-purpose fold shape which is going to be our um drop point knife all right the drop point this is the zt zero tolerance 0450 this is modified also you see the drop point has a straight spine and then a subtle drop to the point. So and that's, you need to tell me it drops at the point. It drops from the spine to the tip so that you can get a good tip on there. This is also a drop point. As you can see, a straight spine and then a drop down to the point. And this net blade shape, I think I got a couple more up here. Here's one. This obviously I already said that one. Or wait, this is the bare knuckle. Sorry, the Kershaw. No, it's not. It's the knockout. Kershaw knockout. Sorry, Kershaw knockout. 
Um, this is a I forget the name. It's a of no this. name. It's a it's a cheap. Ethan we modified Bro. this too. Yeah. Anyways, um. You don't want to buy. This is a drop point. Actually, it's a very good blade. I'm <laughs> not going to get into it right now. This yeah. is actually a pretty decent knife. It's just they. I'm just joking. They messed up a couple okay. things. Anyways, um, this is a drop point. The Rake P801, and here the FH12 also. A drop point, and it's a very subtle drop point. It almost looks like a straight back, but it's not. It is a drop point, just very, very slightly. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so the drop point was made for basically a pocket knife or an all-around, not necessarily a pocket knife, but for an all-around, a multi-purpose blade, a blade that is a jack of all trades, master of none. So it's not a master of one thing, like some of these blade shapes right. are for, but it can do them all. Yep. And so you have the the belly of the blade for roll cuts. So if you need skinning purposes or whatever, you can slice things and you have a good strong tip on it. Usually, I mean, sometimes they're not strong tips, but usually have a pretty good tip on it for piercing and cutting. So you get a lot of different things. That's why it is the most common blade shapes, blade shape for pocket knives these days. And it is the most sought after and most liked blade shape by most people is the drop point. This also can almost be a drop point. Um, but since it does have the two different grinds, it's kind it, of just a crossover. Blade yeah, this around. is definitely a um, a unique. crossover. It's definitely unique. All right, this is also a drop point. This is an MMP, another one. This is people's favorite blade shape, so we'll be into it a little it's a more. Good example, yeah, it's sure. a very good example because it does have the strong belly, very strong or very good piercing tip hollow grind for and it's, so it's a very good slicer so very good at everything so it's a multi-purpose blade okay let's move on to the cleaver all right the cleaver i love cleavers all right this is the mini sheepdog by kaiser this was just like what it sounds like it was made for cleaving the cleaver was made for chopping limbs and bones for chef's food prep um, in the field, whatever, if you need to chop off a limb because a lot of times your knife couldn't have done it or, you know, for chefs and in the kitchen they Bones. needed to cut straight through a bone and cut it in half or cut off a limb or even for trees. You'll find it for like in machetes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The cleaver is a very tall blade shape that is, so it's very good at slicing. Um, but since it has such a heavy blade, you know, on the front end of the knife, you get a lot of weight when you chop down. Yeah, they so, almost always have very thick blade stocks. All the, very thick. all the weight of the blade will go directly into the edge. They almost never have a tip on them because they're not used for tips. And a lot of times they're a lot more massive. Everybody knows the cleaver mm -hmm. in the kitchen. This one's a little bit angled at the front. And they almost, it's almost like because they cut the tip off at the front, they don't open it. They almost, you know, give you this slight tip down at the bottom. But that's just this knife. Some cleavers are dead straight at the front. Nowadays, we do um, make pocket knives with cleaver blades. And it's actually very popular these days because we they're have found... Yeah, when it's made in a small version like this one is, because normally, like I said, they're very big. But when they're made in small versions like this, you find that they are very purposeful. I mean, you can get... You know, good tip action. The big know. ones can be more novelty, but I do find yeah. genuine usefulness in the smaller ones. Even I bring that to work every day, and it has been more useful to me than anything. I have used it um, quite a bit, but it is more of a novelty blade shape for me. But I can use it, definitely, because it does still have that, that blade shape of, like, a um, a razor blade for me. Yep, but, exactly. So you can get, you know, good scraping done with it or not scraping, but, you know, scrape cuts with it. But you can use the tip on it. You can slice with it. It's a very multi-useful uh, blade yeah, shape for pocket knives. Sure. And like I said, a lot of people are using them these days for little pocket knives. Very useful. Okay, let's go ahead and, since it's somewhat similar, address the razel sitting there in the middle. All right, the razel. The razel 
is inspired by a chisel. It's for woodworking, basically. The chisel um, can have the two different grinds. And this is actually a very useful blade shape because you get, just like with the Tonto, you get the two edges that meet up at one point, and that gets very sharp. And I've used this heavily for construction, and I liked it because I could use the two tips right there for slicing. I could use this for scraping or prying, and I could actually use this edge for so many different purposes. Like I said, when I'd scrape things up or need to clean something off, or if I need to get in between two things that were very tightly fitted, I could get it right in there, spread them apart, or, you know, uh, bend it up. And, yeah, it's a very thick blade stock. as um, They usually have a very slicey edge. So I know... The razor, this is a CRKT razor, but there also is the razor. What, what, yes, baby. Well, it's the Graham razor, the Graham the razor. But I just wanted to address that the razor is a coin term from the knife makers called the Graham Brothers. It's not a, it's a blade shape, but it's not like the same way you think of clip point. It is a phrase that the Graham Brothers coined. It is yes. their word for this shape knife. Yes, but it is definitely inspired by a chisel. Yes, correct. It's and for woodworking because similar. you, you know, and it has the two edges that meet up and this is a lot more useful. Like if you carried this and got to use it, you'd realize how useful this blade shape actually is. It also for... was originally intended to be a fixed blade. I just want to put that out. It is still a fixed blade. I know. Even I'm CRKT like the, still, the still sells it. The one was secondary to the fix. CRKT carries a very large version yeah. of this, but we're not talking about knives right now. We're talking about just blade shapes, but it's a very good blade shape. This one usually is mostly found with just the Graham Razels. CRKT picked it up from uh, from Graham Razels. They designed this one and then a smaller version and then uh, but you are finding it more and more with custom makers where they are making more cut off um, edges and then sharpening them mm -hmm. on knives and they're very very useful. All right, let's go ahead and move on to serrations as our last. Two. There's one more after that. Oh, okay. Serrations. All right, serrations, which I know this is more of a grind than a blade shape, but it can be because you can get full serrated blades, and they were made for, for cutting limbs down. Anything that you can't just take a regular edge to. Like a seatbelt. Just take an edge, and like a seatbelt, just take an edge to a but that's usually a one blade thing but take okay. an edge to a like a limb on a tree or a very thick rope and you're going to take you forever to cut through well you take some serrations oh, take some serrations and it'll plow right through it so serrations is very good for cutting rope or cutting limbs off of something that your edge is not going to be able to get through or It'll get dull before you ever get through it. So you just take it right to your serrations. You can saw right through it. And it's, you know, obviously everybody knows the saw. Well, then it got modified into knives, pocket knives, and also for for rescue. Um, rescues use it a lot. Like she said, it's good for seat belts and, you know, cutting ropes and, and whatnot and so forth. So it's quicker for yeah, them to get very quick stuff. to get through something. They don't care about cutting it nicely. They just want to get through it. Yep. All right, you have your little <clears throat> surprise category you wanted to bring up? Um, well, I was just going to talk about the recurve. Oh. The recurve blade. This blade was inspired by choppers for getting through the brush in field jungles whatnot and so forth it's very good at chopping because all the weight of the blade is in the front so when you chop it's all the pressure is pinpointed towards the front of the blade which gives you very very strong chopping to cut right through you know tree limbs and whatnot and so forth and we still use it for the same thing today but we do make lots of pocket knives with a belly on them or with a recurve there's lots of blade shapes lots of pocket knives with recurves and we used it for basically slicing and cutting because this knife even if it was a pocket knife can the the front belly of the knife we can use for cutting 
and then we can use this recurve part for slicing and it basically kind of sucks in on two different areas this way and this way into the middle right there for slicing so it's a very good slicer but it's a very very good chopper so there you guys go all right recurve. and uh if anybody made it this far leave us a comment and let us know what you use your knives for in blade shapes that's what i was gonna say that's what you're gonna say i'm sorry mm -hmm. baby take your words out of your mouth but yeah please leave us a comment let us know if we missed any blade shapes and let us know what uh you guys use these blade shapes for especially if we miss something because we'd like to know i'd really like to know if, what blade shapes we missed because i know we missed some and then let us know what you guys use your blade shapes for All bang right. bang thank you